Okay guys, next thing we're going to do is install the valve cover, also known as a rocker cover. And that covers the top half of the engine. Make sure that your teacher has inspected the, the gap for the rocker arms or the valves. So we're going to remove my four bolts. I'm going to make sure my gasket is in the proper place. It's not torn or damaged and this gasket's still in good shape. Um, I wouldn't reuse this gasket if this was an automotive engine for long-term use. There is slight damage in one corner there, but for these engines, this will suffice because these engines are not going to be driven down the road and not going to be run for long. So I'm going to put that in there like so. Make sure that your hose goes towards your carburetor. The carburetor is supposed to be in this location later on. So I'm going to put that in there all the four bolts in by hand, just a couple of threads, but make sure it does go in smoothly. Alright, so I got my nut driver again. Again, not too much pressure, very light. As soon as I feel a little bit of pressure, see how the, the, the cover went off on an angle? I'm going to attack the next one in a crisscross pattern. Again, light pressure. That gasket is made of cork. This specific one, yours might be different. Um, and cork is not a very resilient gasket material for, for retightening and tightening over and over again. So I'm going to do the crisscross pattern slightly tighter every single time. And I can feel it bottoming out. I can feel the metal touching each other. So that cork is going to take up the difference. All right. And I'm using a nut driver. Very important. Just a nut driver in this because I don't want to over tighten the gasket. Okay. And you can't over tighten it with a nut driver. We're not going to use a ratchet here. Big no no. Okay, guys. Now we're going to be installing the uh, carburetor, the, uh, the acceleration and governor uh, lever there. Uh, we're going to put the heat shield in, gasket, and related springs and levers. All right. So first things first, we've got to do it in the same order that was it was uh, removed. Uh, we've got to be careful of the rooting old wiring and stuff. We have to make sure that it's in a position where it's not going to be hitting anything. So the wiring from the spark, uh, from the ignition coil, there's two wires. We've got to make sure it's out of the way. One big one goes to the spark. Looks pretty straightforward, that one. The skinny wire, we've got to tuck it in underneath this bolt here and underneath the governor uh, lever and then there's a groove in the, in the engine block which the wiring has to follow and then it can reach the wiring back over here. Okay, so we can deal with that in a little bit. But it's out of the way, it's on the opposite side of the, of the flywheel. Okay. Alright, so now we're going to remove my two nuts on my stud. I'm going to put them down. I'm going to take my heat shield. I'm going to make sure it's in the proper direction. Now, if you uh, if you look at closely, you can see that the intake. You can see that it's flat on one side and rounded on the other. And you can see over here, this is 100% round. But if you flip it over, you can see it's flat and then rounded. So that flat spot's got to line up with that flat spot. So I'm going to put it on there just like so. Okay. And that remember when we took it apart, this extra little bit of uh, plate over here keeps the heat of the engine away from the carburetor. We don't want the heat of the engine going in the carburetor because then it'll boil the fuel in the fuel bowl. Okay, so we got that in its place. This wire here, the spark plug wire, goes directly in that channel right there. Okay, we're going to place our carburetor in like so. Make sure that lines up. Okay, and the fuel line goes directly on that groove there, and that goes directly underneath that fan shroud bolt, and that'll get connected to our fuel tank. Okay, then we got this big gasket here with the rubber insert, and again, we got to remember which direction that goes in. Okay, guys, and I believe it was like so. Yeah, that looks about right. Oh, no, that doesn't. There we go. So now we got all the holes in the carburetor exposed and we're going to have good flow there. Okay. Now, I'm going to put my nut on there for now just so things don't fall off because I'm going to be installing the brackets and stuff. This bracket here, it's got a spring 
because you have two springs in a rod. This spring with no rod goes underneath the bracket, okay? Goes underneath the bracket like so. And attaches back here on the governor lever, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and attach that right now. And now I'm going to be able to place that in the corresponding holes in the, on the engine block. Okay guys, so I'm just going to remove my uh, two bolts here. One has, a, um, one has a little piece of metal bracketry. We're going to place that off to the side for now. We don't want to lose that. It's pretty important. And then there's another bolt here. Uh, we have to uh, remember to place in the engine block as well. Actually, this one's a cylinder head. Now, actually guys, before we put this in, you can see here that my lever is covered. So my rod, I'm gonna have a hard time with this rod. So actually, I'm gonna put my, my rod and spring in before I put this bracket in, okay? We're gonna just leave that sitting off to the side with my two bolts off to the side on my bench, okay? I'm gonna take this rod here. I'm gonna place this end here, this curved end, in my uh, bracket. And then the other end goes simply, actually that doesn't go in that direction, it's upside down, it's got to go this way, 